Recently, some troubling uh, allegations of about people that are associated with Nightcap on Minjimbal and the Mount Burrell commercial area, uh, that this person is a convicted pedophile. Now, it's a very... <laughs> For most people, I don't think you need to explain just how disgusting and ab abhorrent this kind of behaviour is, how difficult it is to speak about and to even think about. Because once you start thinking about these things, you're actually putting your thoughts in not a very nice place. Uh, try and understand people that have got um, really no place in our society. In all societies, pedophiles are rejected and a lot of them it's actually a death sentence. Now when it does come to pedophilia, it is, well I think what most of us are aware of that it happens too frequently and not just at the elite level but in society at large. It's there too much. But it's there and it has been increasing over the years simply because it is one of the most difficult things to prove. And there was even a stage there where a lot of women were using it to get back at their exes making false allegations. So thereby, you know, it just, it takes the validity out of the real concerns in our society, the concerns that any parent and any normal person has, that we protect our children from would-be predators. And not just the sexual offence side of it, but the fact where they are then murdered to keep them silent. Now I do remember years ago that they introduced the Sex Offenders Register in Australia. And I do remember too that Darren Hinch was trying to get it public. Because basically, does Australia have a Sex Offender Registry? Yes, it does. But it's not public. No one in the public is allowed to know and only the police have access to that information and they are not allowed to give it out to anybody. They are under very strict guidelines of how they deal with the information on the sex offender registry. So essentially you have to trust that police are actually following up on all the sex offenders that are on the registry that they are actually giving them the correct information and that they're not putting anyone at risk in the community. Because you in the community are not allowed to know who the sex offenders amongst you are. But I also do remember this site, the MAKO website, that as it says here is uh, to view the details and whereabouts of sex offenders in Australia, the public does have access to the Movement Against Kindred Offenders, MAKO website. MAKO is an Australian non-profit organisation. This website is not endorsed or authorised by any government body, so its legitimacy cannot be verified. However, one can see that its relatively simple access may be appealing to parents or other concerned parties. So you click on this link here to MAKO and it comes up with this. Actually on my other browser it said, oops, there's a problem. Yeah, you can't, that page doesn't exist. So I thought, oh, blow it. So I went on to the Wayback Machine and it came up with all these captures. And the thing being too is that the first capture I picked was actually one that redirected me to Facebook. 
and so there I went through all the captures to find out when was the last capture that it went to the Mako website which is February 24th. After that these captures go to a um, website temporarily unavailable and then by October it goes it redirects to the Facebook page and it brings up this where it's been captured 10 times the Facebook page. Now I didn't think you could actually capture Facebook pages but well there it did capture a Facebook page but no matter what you do it, even when you use it through your Facebook account it doesn't register that you're logged on and if you did try to log on it just doesn't recognize you anyway so essentially you can look at the information until it brings up that window to say log in and even then you can scroll down but there's not much there and of course if you try and look at it now the web the Facebook page doesn't exist and the website doesn't exist but on the Wayback Machine it does exist and this is the February 2018 one that was the capture just before it went the website went down and then after a few months it started redirecting to a Facebook page that is no longer available and I click through the various links on here and you can find out all the details these ones will bring up the pages so you can actually and I did a blog on it so that you can that'll take you to the main page of what uh, Mako that'll take you to the home page that'll take you to this page here oh actually that's the A list but pre-list one actually comes up with the A's anyway and you can search them alphabetically or uh, I just put in the each state and territories link in there and this one here search Mako within the church that actually all comes up on one page so you you don't actually need to click on searching through all alphabetically because it's all on the one page that you bring up uh, just search through the page if you want to find the, a specific name or you could use uh, go down to the bottom if you're looking for someone in a particular state or territory now the general files that they have it is um, they are large so they're not contained on each page but they are contained if you wanted to have a quick look at each state they are all included in there but the alphabetical lists if you're looking for one in particular that uh, you have to actually use one of these up here so the link to access that is on the blog here you can access it directly there through search Mako files online that will bring you up with those so that you could search for a surname so this website a very short amount of time after the 25th of February the website was closed down now the thing being at the time that there was a lot of controversy about making the sex offenders public because there were um, concerns that the poor pedophiles sex offenders would actually be harassed within their communities that they settled and they've already done their prison time you know they've done the time the crime served the time and now they should be left in peace and well you know from one perspective I would agree from that but from another perspective it's like well the fact that they are actually allowed to continue to live when they look let's face it pedophiles are broken they are not what anyone in normal society accepts or wants in their group 
They are outcasts, they are ostracised, they are not welcome. So the fact that they actually get to live, I mean, you know, it's my idea that there should be an island that you can stick them all on and just let them take care of themselves. They should not be let as risks to our children. You know, the, the right to protect the would-be abuser that most pedophiles are going to be re-offenders. It is a mental disorder. Something is wrong with them. They are never going to be normal. That is like saying that you can make someone that's gay ungay. It's not something that you can change. It's part of who they are. And I'm not saying gays are pedophiles, okay? I'm just saying that sexual orientation is something that pretty much you are born with. It is not something that you, you can be cured of, all right? It's part of who you are. Now, I'd say that most people are fairly liberal in what happens behind closed doors between consenting adults. We really don't care. But when it comes to our children, those that are not even mature to have hormones to become sexually active, these are the problems that society needs to, well, eradicate, not protect. Now, all these sex offenders in Australia are protected from being known. When they are released into society, you are not allowed to know that that threat exists in your society. Or, like, at what level of threat? Because I know that the sex offenders list does cover, you know, like you've got teenagers that um, fooled around a bit. One happened to be just over 18 and the other one was under. And, you know, the parents found out, cracked the shits and accused the boy of being a pedophile, a sex offender. See, those kinds of abuses of the law have actually made it why real pedophiles are not exposed in society because of the abuses. And also, well... We know how laws have been manipulated to people's own personal agendas where people have been accused of things that they've never done. So it's like the little boy that cried wolf. And because the little boy would cry wolf, none of us are allowed to know who the problems are. And like so many things in society, rules are made for those that would abuse the rules, not those that can follow them without them even being rules. I mean, as I said, I don't need to explain to most normal people how you feel about it, that there is no way that, look, even if it wasn't legislated as illegal, it is immoral, it is wrong, and in your own conscience, it is not right, and it would never be supported as legal. And yet there's been this... Well, thankfully, since Trump has been in this stupid PC and gender confusion stuff and even trying to justify um, the ludicrousy that when pedophiles came out and said that they should be recognised, you know, like any other sexual preference. It's like, are you kidding me? Now they're trying to normalise pedophilia. Sex with children, they are trying to normalise that. And, well, Trump got in and then all that bullshit seemed to get squashed for a while. But now we've got the PC idiots back in. And Nancy Pelosi, oh, seriously. You know, there are some people that you look at and straight away all you can see is a bunch of cackling witches around a cauldron. And she's just one of those people that brings that image to mind. There is nothing good that she emanates. And, I mean, seriously, you know, there's something wrong with her thinking. You know, she's not not all there. Even the way she speaks, I mean, has she had um, a stroke or something like that? I mean, has she got early onset of dementia? I don't know because she's very slow, very simple, 
and um, she can't expand too elaborately on things. She's like the, the fuddled old grandmother that keeps forgetting where she left her glasses, you know? That's if you had an image of a sweet little old lady. But, you know, she's not the kind of person that you get that sweet little old lady vibe from. I mean, as I say, witches round a cauldron is, is the vibe I get off her. Really not a very nice person. And the fact that this woman is actually directing so much animosity um, in the uh, United States, in America right now. You know, <laughs> thank goodness she's not in Australia, eh? Because that would actually make the sex offenders get more protection. How, how are you going to try and identify gender roles and appropriate behaviour if you take out the traditional values of society. You cannot take away the traditional values of men and women, mothers and fathers, grandparents, grand uh, aunts and uncles. Just because there is some warped minority, and they are a warped minority and as far as world standards are concerned, it is a minority. These standards do not represent the world, but yet the world are too readily directed by the actions in America. You watch how the PC correctness will all start coming out again. And all these people with their rights, minority rights, that want to supplant the rights of the whole with the individual rights. And with individual rights, every time you say, right, this group has individual rights over the group, you're tearing apart the fabric of society. Now, the world has watched as America has done this to itself and to the world, torn apart the very moral fibre of our communities, of our society, by trying to redefine us the very simple concepts of, I'm sorry, there are only two genders. And it is no phobia or racist or anything like that to actually know basic facts. There's male and female and we are not an homophrodite species, okay? If you're an homophrodite species then you might be able to talk about the, the blurred gender line but we're not, okay? We are an animal, we are a mammal, we have biology, get over it, alright? And the very basic function of any mammal and its sexual reproductive organs is to procreate the species, not to get pleasure out of it, okay? So the part of saying that certain things should, people should be allowed to get pleasure out of it, especially with our children, who have no form of knowledge in the ability to give consent or even knowing what it is. Because until your hormones kick in, you have no idea of what it actually means to be sexually active, to be sexually attracted or attractive. So you cannot have any concept of it. Now anyone that remembers what it's like to be a child before your hormones kicked in, you will know this. There is no real concept of what it is until your hormones kick in. And that actually changes your ability to understand the procreative nature of the mammal that you are. And that's where your responsibilities and choices as a human being come in. And it's those kind of choices that you make uh, that are supposed to distinct us from wild, rabid animals that just, you know, do it for the sake of procreating and it's a natural instinct as to the human beings that actually participate in that activity, not to make children, but to get the pleasure out of it. So when you're seeking to make pleasure 
from the activities that involve our innocent children. And you are never going to be unborn differently in this lifetime. You are always going to have those urges. It's a matter of whether you can control those urges. It's like whether an alcoholic can control whether they're not going to drink anymore or a drug addict not take any more drugs or a shopaholic not go shopping anymore or anyone that's addicted to any kind of behaviour whether they have any kind of self-control. Well, h human beings lapse on self-control. You might have someone that hasn't offended in 20 years and then all of a sudden for no reason at all they just decide they're going to do it because they haven't done it in a long time and no one would suspect them maybe, so I don't know. But why would they just suddenly do it? But they do. And that's when you cannot undo the damage that they do. Now, I've talked about when I lived at Port Arthur and how it was, well, a pretty big eye-opener. One of the experiences that I went through down there was that Well, before I explain that, perhaps I ought to tell you about what growing up in Tasmania was like. There's very little crime here. And from the minute I could read the newspaper, you always knew that, well, there were virtually no murders or major crime in Tasmania. And if there was a murder, it would become front page headlines. Everybody would know about it. But... When I moved down to Port Arthur, there was events that happened on the Tasman Peninsula that, well, obviously were written about in newspapers before I was old enough to read them and be aware of. And, of course, it wasn't something that my mum was going to discuss with me. I mean, you didn't talk about those things. So when I moved down there and I found out that there were kids that went missing and they were found dead. They were sexually abused. They were boys around the age of 10 and they had been murdered afterwards. And one of the boys that uh, was friends, well, it affected because the guy I fell in love with and moved down there with, it was one of his friend's brothers that was the last murder victim and in meeting this guy recently too a few years ago he is also friends with the person that was the actual 10 year old boy that was the one that got away and reported him uh, no actually he he didn't report him to police that's right and the next victim was actually their, this um, friend's brother. And the guy, the young 10-year-old boy that was so scared to say anything has lived the rest of his life blaming himself because he never told police and or anybody what had happened to him. And then he went on to do it to somebody else and kill them and he feels responsible for that to this very day for his death so this did happen down at the Tasman Peninsula and it was it was a very well it was a very hard thing to actually hear about and how close it was to the people that I knew it was their mate that didn't come home from school one day and you could see how it affected all of them that were involved and that were friends there was just a scar left on them and one of them that it left a scar on uh, he committed suicide actually in the time I was actually living down at Port Arthur and when I say Port Arthur was one of the heaviest learning curbs of my life, there was a lot of um, stuff that 
I was confronted with and had to deal with. And uh, it actually is kind of um, eye-opening too about how insular um, smaller communities are and how much goes on inside communities that involve a larger group of people that is never reported on and nobody ever knows. And especially to like with the activities of pedophiles. People cannot prove it even though they know it. And anyone that tries to make any accusation against someone has to have proof to back it up or else, you know, it's an unfounded claim. So that's essentially why I went looking to see if there was a current Australian sex offenders list and to find out sadly that it does not exist and that any record that was put together to help the general public be aware of people that have committed certain offences. And for the most part, most people are going to not use this information as a vigilante type vendetta thing. It is to create awareness so that anyone that might be living amongst us, that we actually are aware of what kind of person they are. Because most of these people, if they're not, well, if they've already been known and convicted, they will probably be very quiet and keep to themselves. So they may not be very well known on who they are in the community. So you may not be aware that there's a risk living down the road. So in the interest of just providing information that was available back in 2018 on the information that was gathered by the MAKO website. Now a lot of these as you can see will give links to publicly available articles and stories. So it's not like any of this information was taken from the actual register. This information was diligently gathered by those that wanted to help people be informed in the community about what they can find out through public means. And uh, yeah. Now on the blog post I've also left a link for here. You can click on any one of these. Actually New South Wales isn't on there. New South Wales comes up with its own thing. And it seems to have um, more limitations on accessing the information about people on the sex offender register. That's why it's not included in this general one because each one of these pretty much says the same things that actually are based around national legislation and they've formulated their state legislation or territory around it. New South Wales has more, uh, it seems to be more protective and put more stringent require requirements, clearly saying that pretty much you cannot give out a sex offender's information. Anything to do with anyone that is on the register is not public information and it is not to be given to the public in any way, shape or form and cannot be accessed by the public and the police cannot confirm or deny anyone that may or may not be on the sex offenders register. So the sex offenders register is purely for government and police use only. It is not for anyone in the public, in the, anyone in the community to be made aware of who these potential problems are. And when it comes down to it, I find the fact that of knowing that the victims of sex, of sex offenders that live with the scars, those that actually are, survive and that aren't killed, they have to live 
with what was done to them every day of their life. So I don't see why there should be a cut-off point for the offenders where they should not have to live with the responsibility of what they have done for the rest of their life. The people that are victims don't get to get over it and escape from it like sex offenders that have served their time in jail do. And for the majority, sex offenders, as I said, you are born with your sexual preferences, but they are not expressed until your hormones come out. Once your hormones come out, that is when you, well, you become very confused. This is why teenage years and puberty is so well known. It's also another reason why offering gender preferences to those going through the confusion of puberty should not be available. I don't care in any way, shape or form. They cannot justify mutilating or giving children the ability to mutilate themselves irreversibly uh, until they reach the age of consent, at least 18 years of age, where they as an adult can make those decisions for themselves. Only then, because sex as we define it is an act, an act that can only be participated in by willing adults, not children. It is not something that children should be involved in at all. And the fact of my mother's generation protecting them too and never talking about it, like, you know, my uncle Trevor was my godfather. And, you know, I didn't really like him that much. He always stunk of pipe smoke because he, and, he, and he was an alcoholic too. And, but I liked my Auntie Marg. And they had a shack down at Newbina. And when I was, um, just after I got my peas, I went for a drive down to Newbina, hoping that Aunty Marg would be there. But Uncle Trevor was, nobody else. And the dirty old bugger locked the doors and tried, yeah, tried it on with me. I'm 17 and he's trying to get in my pants. And, you know, I ran around and, you know, finally I got out and I was shaking all the way home to Mum. And when I told Mum, she said, yes, uh, Trevor's been known to be a bit like that. And my mouth dropped. And I said, what? Mum, why didn't you, why uh, didn't you warn me? Why didn't you warn anyone? And she'd say, well, it's not the kind of thing you talk about. And that's why we have such a problem with it. Because in my mum's generation, it was not the kind of thing you talked about. And it still isn't the kind of thing you talk about. And the less that people do talk about it and admit that it is becoming a very big problem in our societies. And it can't be stopped because of the difficulty in proving that it is being done. Women that find themselves in the real position of being mothers that cannot stop what's been done to their children and nobody will believe them. This is a real problem. And too many children each day are going to become a fresh victim because we don't face up to the problems that we do have. It is rampant in Aboriginal Australia too. It's a problem there, but like my mum, it's not something you talk about. You don't want to admit that it's going on in amongst the tribes as well. And through all this protection, we allow it to continue to happen. We have to talk about the tough things and you have to be aware that these people do live amongst all of us. And it's not something that is exclusive to any race or religion or gender. It is 
something that people are born with. And there is more of a problem now with the risk to children, simply because of all this stupid crap that's been uh, associated around all these sexual preferences, rights and gender preferences and they, and I'd prefer to be called this pronoun. Ah, I tell you what, if they even try and bring back any of that crap, as the rest of the world, we have got to say no. No way. You will accept there are two genders. We are not Hermaphrodite species, okay? We are not. We are bi, you know, as in two genders. Not tri, not I don't know, haven't figured it out yet. Not neutral, not they. They is a plural. You know, any idiot out there that says, well, you cannot refer to me as she or he, but they... I mean, seriously, you've got an identity problem. That is a mental health issue, not a sexual preferences issue. And they do not need rights. They need help. So we should stop pandering to all these people that want to create all these issues around bullshit and deal with the real problems. Because as long as you're dealing with, oh, what, are we male, female, maybe... Uh, it, them, they, who, who really needs it redefined? Biology. We don't need to waste any more time. And we especially don't need to waste any more time being silent about the silent crimes that do go on in our society against our children that nobody can stop because we are not talking about it. I know it's not the easiest thing. You get censored and shut down so much for it. But the issues cannot be wrapped up in all these ones that, you know, they get on their social mediums and they say, oh, because you bought that up, you're this ist or you've got this phobia or whatever. They are the ones that are damaged. Do not pay them any mind. You know, and they're only going to have well, damaged followers. And as I said, that what has gone on with all this crap that pretty much the Democrats in America are responsible for, the rest of the world is not going to go through another rerun of that. And it's up to each and every one of us to nip it in the bud, especially on Facebook, where all these you know, activists will come out and go, oh, you know, we've got to look after this minority and that minority. We have got problems in the larger society and we need to come together as human beings to deal with those problems. We are, you know, we've got rot inside our communities. What name we call each other is just completely sweeping any issues under the carpet. We need to deal with them and stop pretending they don't exist. Stop pretending that the only thing that matters is whether I'm called she, he, they, it, or that you recognize me if I've got, well, what gender am I? I don't know, I could be female, male, um, but I'm not. I was born female, I will always be female, even if my sexual preferences made me want to be with women, I'm still a female. And if I turned around and said to someone, well, I don't want you to call me she or refer to me as female, you can call me it or they, it's like seriously, if they actually did that, I would actually think that there's something mentally wrong with them. Are you kidding me? You can't tell the difference? Did you not pay attention in school in biology? Do you not know what mammals are? Do you not know that we are mammals? What, you think that we're better than the rest of the animals? I'll tell you what, take a good look round in society 
and you tell me what animals do to each other, what human beings do to each other. If you think that we are better, answer that question. And I think on that note, I've said enough. <laughs> I'm going to leave it. I'll catch you next time.